the Roman Empire had finally fallen. But did it really? Did it really fall? Because at the same time, here in Constantinople, the Eastern Empire is thriving. It's prospering. And in 527 AD, an emperor named Justinian comes to the throne, who's not only completely committed to recodifying all of Roman law, he's bent on reconquering Constantine's empire. Justinian I ruled during the Byzantine Empire's golden age. Yet, ironically, the man who lusted after the glory of ancient Rome was an outsider. Well, the Emperor Justinian was born a peasant in uh, what is now northern Yugoslavia. And he came with his uncle Justin to Constantinople to seek their fortunes. His 40-year reign would be marked by intellectual brilliance, an unparalleled work ethic, and unbridled ruthlessness. Two years before ascending to the throne, Justinian married a beautiful, strong-willed woman named Theodora. But there was just one problem. Theodora was a former burlesque dancer. So to take her checkered past out of the equation, Justinian simply promoted her. The day he was crowned emperor, he named Theodora as his co-empress. Her ascension to power sent shockwaves through the Byzantine aristocracy. She was supposedly a prostitute hanging out around the Hippodrome, involved in things like bear dancing. Not exactly sure what happens in bear dancing, but it definitely was not such a great thing. And she had a very active sex life. Together, Justinian and Theodora would rule the empire as equals. She must have been highly intelligent, and she must have been very wily, uh, very successful at court politics. Justinian quickly realized that his legacy would be built on restoring the bygone glory of ancient Rome. He began by reclaiming Western territories that had been lost over the years. Back home in Constantinople, Justinian went on a construction spree. Bad news is to pay for this building, he went on a ballistic campaign of taxation, which was just as popular then as it probably would have been now. Along with the taxes, he tries to control or stamp out any form of pagan celebration, the study of the ancient philosophers at Athens, gambling, prostitution, adultery, homosexuality, any Christian that doesn't see it his way, and the Jews. He didn't have a lot of fans. But so what? He's an emperor. He's not listening to approval ratings. But you know what? He should have. As Justinian tightened his grip on the people, the city's resentment turned to rage. And unlike other civilizations, where the masses had no place to voice their anger, the Byzantines had their hippodrome. The hippodrome was the center of Constantinople's public life. Conceived as a stadium for chariot racing, it could hold as many as 100,000 people. Construction of the hippodrome had taken place over centuries. It was a gigantic task incorporating every known building technique. Shaped like an enormous U and modeled after Rome's renowned Circus Maximus, Constantinople's hippodrome was nearly a third of a mile long and wider than a modern-day football field.